Hi, Izzy here from Tech Tire and Wheel. Welcome to the Tech Passenger two-piece puncture repair course. In this course, we will discuss in detail the steps for a proper two-piece puncture repair. We will show you the tech recommended repair process, which follows the industry standards. We created a simple acronym, R-E-P-A-I-R, -E to help you remember the steps used to perform a proper tire repair. R represents remove the tire from the wheel and inspect. E stands for evaluate the injury. P means prepare the injury. A is for apply vulcanizing fluid. I means install repair and R return to service. Today we're going to teach you how to remove and inspect a tire that has incurred an injury. By removing the tire from the wheel, this allows you to fully inspect the tire, including the inside of the tire, for any non-repairable conditions. This inspection is to ensure the tire is able to be repaired and is safe to be returned to service. Your inspection should include the bead area, the side walls, the tread area, and the inside of the entire tire. If you see any injuries, mark them during this inspection process with a high quality tire marker. When the tire is inspected, there are several conditions deemed by the tire industry guidelines as non-repairable conditions. These are a tire that has been run flat or run on underinflated conditions, tire inner liner separations, tire casing separations, excessive tread wear, exposed body plies or cables, deformed bead, exposed fabric or steel, ozone cracking, damage from impacts. Once you determine that the tire does not suffer from any of these non-repairable conditions, it is time to begin the second step in the process, which is E. This stands for evaluating the injury. If the object that punctured the tire is still present, you will now need to remove it. This is the perfect time to visually examine the injured area of the tire. Next, by using Tech's TRT-105 inspection tool, you will be able to quickly and precisely measure the size and the angle of the injury while minimizing the chance of enlarging the damaged area. For passenger and fabric body LT tires, the maximum injury size is a quarter inch or six millimeters after damage removal. For steel body ply LT and larger tires, the maximum injury size is three eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters. In this example, the injury is greater than 35 degrees, so we will use a two-piece repair. Here we can see the injury has accepted the tool just below the second line. This calls for the use of a 250-1UL Uniseal stem and an appropriate repair unit. There are a handful of repairs which provide enough reinforcement for a quarter-inch injury in the crown, such as these. We will be using a 115 repair unit. If you recall, P is for prepare the injury. Begin by spraying or pouring Tech Rubomatic on the area to be cleaned. While the area is still moist, use a rubber scraper to remove contaminating substances. This process should be repeated three times to guarantee complete removal of contaminants, such as silicone mold lubricants used in the tire's manufacturing process. I can't stress enough that pre-cleaning the inner liner is critical for proper adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner. It will also help prolong the life of your buffing wheel. Use the appropriate size Tech Carbide Cutter, again, in a low speed drill with a maximum of 1200 RPMs to properly prepare the injury. The low speed drill eliminates the possibility of scorching the rubber in the injury. It is important to follow the angle of the injury you previously determined from the inside of the tire. Equally important is to ensure your drill is rotating in a clockwise rotation. Now drill out the injury and repeat this process a minimum of three times in a passenger or light truck tire. If working on a tire with steel body plies, it will require five passes through the tire with the carbide cutter. Next, repeat this procedure three times from the outside of the tire to ensure proper injury preparation. Five passes through the tire will be needed on tires with steel body plies. After the drilling is complete, the injury should be inspected using a probe to make sure all splits and loose materials have been removed. Apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid into the injury from inside the tire using a spiral cement tool with a clockwise rotation. This procedure should be repeated three to five times depending on the thickness of the tire. 
Remove the colored poly from the stem by folding the stem along the crease to break the poly free. Remove the colored poly and reposition the poly on the stem near the end to prevent touching the cushion gum. Touching the cushion gum will cause contamination that may lead to repair failure. Apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid to the black tapered area of the stem only. This ensures proper lubrication to make the application of the repair unit easier. Insert the lead wire through the injury. Grasp the wire on the outside of the tire with pliers. Pull the stem through the tire until approximately an eighth of an inch of the stem remains above the inner liner. Place the appropriate template on the inside of the tire on the stem and using a tire paint stick, trace around the edge of the template. If no template is available, trace half an inch larger than your repair unit. This line will serve as a guide for mechanical buffing of the inner liner. Next, mechanically buff within the marked area using a low RPM buffer and an appropriate buffing wheel to achieve a smooth, even buff texture. Do not exceed 5,000 RPM. If the speed of the tool exceeds 5,000 RPM, scorching of the rubber surface will occur, which will greatly reduce the adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner. Buff the rest of the stem first, then buff the rest of the area to a number one or number two texture. Mechanical buffing ensures proper adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner by creating a clean textured surface. Be sure to run the buffing wheel from side to side across the inner liner as shown. This will prevent cutting grooves into the inner liner and promotes better adhesion. Once the surface is texturized, it is time to move to the next step in the tech repair process. A is for applying the vulcanizing fluid. Let's get started. After you have buffed the proper size area of the tire's inner liner, you now need to fully remove any leftover particles. Using a soft wire brush on a low RPM tool, lightly brush to remove loose buffing dust and steel shavings from the buffed surface. This is an important step to create a clean prepared surface to maximize repair unit adhesion. You may need to repeat this process two to three times to ensure that all buffing dust and steel shavings are removed. Do not use a compressed air line for this procedure. The compressed air may contain moisture and oil that will contaminate the buffed surface. Now, vacuum all buffing dust and steel shavings from the tire. Avoid contacting the buffed surface with the vacuum as this can contaminate your prepared surface which will compromise your repair adhesion. Follow this by applying a thin, even coat of chemical vulcanizing fluid to the buffed surface of the inner liner. Do not apply vulcanizing fluid to any unprepared surfaces. This could lead to contamination of the repair area and the can of vulcanizing fluid. You need to allow approximately three to five minutes for the vulcanizing fluid to dry. Additional drying time is required in cold and humid climates. Vulcanizing fluid must be completely dry before applying the repair to avoid trapping solvent under the repair, which could create a bubble, which leads to inadequate adhesion and ultimately could result in the repair failing. While the chemical vulcanizing fluid dries, prepare the Tech 115 all-purpose repair unit by removing the colored poly. Bend the 115 in half to expose the center of the repair unit and prevent touching the cushion gum. Touching the cushion gum will cause contamination that may lead to repair failure. Make sure the tire beads are relaxed to prevent bridging of the repair unit. Once the Tech 115 all-purpose repair unit is in place, press down the repair unit with your thumb. If you are installing a radial repair unit, be sure to align the arrows on the repair unit toward the beads of the tire. If you do not properly align the bead arrows, this could result in repair failure due to the repair unit not flexing properly with the tire. Now using your stitcher, stitch the repair unit down working from the center outward. This process removes any air which might be trapped between the repair unit and the inner liner of the tire. Exert firm pressure on the stitcher to maximize adhesion. After partially stitching the repair, remove the colored poly from under the edges and continue stitching to the edges of the repair. After stitching is completed, make sure to remove the clear protective covering found on the cap of the repair as shown. 
Next R, which stands for Return the Tire to Service. When repairing a tubeless tire, seal the edge of the repair unit and the overbuffed area with Tech number 738 Security Coat or number 739 Butyl Liner Repair Sealer. These repair sealers help to restore the air retention properties of the area of buffed inner liner outside of the area covered by the repair as shown. So what all is entailed in returning the tire to service? Well, we have to remount the tire to the wheel, then balance the tire and wheel assembly, then install the wheel assembly to the vehicle, and finally relearn the TPMS if needed. Be sure to properly torque the lug nuts to manufacturer specifications. If you want to learn more about Tech's complete line of tire repairs, specialty chemicals, and all the tools used in our Tech training course, refer to the list at the end and contact your Tech distributor or visit techtirerepairs.com.